that's pretty funny. Hi, my name is Frida. I am writing my PhD thesis in the field of quantum technology. You might have heard of quantum computers before, but quantum sensors are actually much closer to real-world applications. Whether it's about the structure of viruses, the processes in our brain, or how the magnetic core of the Earth is composed. All of this might become more available to us with quantum sensors. The basic idea is to take a quantum system and turn it into a sensor. Think about it like a thermometer. The mercury inside reacts to heat. By putting the mercury into the thermometer, we can make it into an accurate temperature measurement device, a sensor. But why quantum systems? Well, first of all, they are tiny, so we can measure tiny things with them. Think about it like this thermometer, where you have very broad lines, versus this thermometer, which has much, much finer lines. One of our most promising quantum sensors actually only has the size of a few atoms. And even better, it is stored inside of a diamond. The sparkly white ones, the ones people rob jewelry stores for, those are perfectly symmetric carbon lattices. But the ones that we physicists work with, well, they are more yellowish, reddish, sometimes even black, and they have a glitch. Two of the carbon atoms are replaced by only one nitrogen atom and one gap next to it. These we call envy centers. These envy centers do something extraordinary if we add an extra electron to it. They start to act as a unit and become really, really good at sensing magnetic fields. So this now is our quantum sensor. But before we get into the details of how the quantum sensing works, we need to get into the interesting quirks that make quantum systems especially sensitive. Think about classical physics, like a dinner at a fine restaurant, tasty but predictable. Then quantum physics is like a rave, wild and fantastic. One of these weird behaviors is quantum superposition. So I, as a human, can walk past this chair either on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. But particles, like electrons, can do both simultaneously. This was proven in the famous double-slit experiment. We call this phenomenon quantum superposition. Another important quantum property is the superposition of spins. All quantum particles spin. While I, as a person, can either spin around the left or around the right, quantum particles can do both at the same time. And this spin superposition state is what makes them extremely sensitive to external magnetic fields. It also turns our little envy center into a really good quantum sensor. However, sensing with quantum systems is extremely challenging. And that is what we are tackling at Cusco. Cusco is a network of European scientists who set out to develop quantum control methods for quantum sensing. Quantum mechanics is so strange and counterintuitive because the things we deal with can be described as both waves and particles at the same time. And controlling quantum systems is extremely difficult. Think about it like playing a game of billiards, but instead of billiard balls, you have water waves. It will bounce off the walls and create all of these interference patterns. But we quantum physicists love our waves with all of their complexities because they can be at many places at the same time and the interference patterns they make for some very interesting effects. Let's look at how the diamond sensor actually works. Hi, I'm Alistair Marshall and I work for Envision Imaging Technologies based in Ulm and we are a startup that is an industrial partner in Cusco. And this is the optics lab in which I work. And I want to show you a little bit about my setup here on the table. This blue wire, this cable here, and that is our green laser. We then pass it through a concave lens to spread the beam out a bit. And then we have a little wheel where we can choose the amount of laser light we want to allow through into the system. From there, we rotate the polarization and then some mirrors bounce the laser light up to the small black diamond here. That would then glows red and we collect that red light we measure it over here in the box. Think about the sensor like this coin. First, we shine a laser onto the diamond. With a simple green laser, like from a laser pointer, we can create an initial state. For the coin, it means placing it heads up on the table. And from that initial state, with some clever microwave trickery, we can manipulate it 
This excites the system into superposition. It's like spinning the coin on its side. While the coin spins, it's neither heads nor tails. But at the same time, we know that as soon as we hit it flat on the table, it has to be either of the two options. And then using another laser pulse, we can read out that state. This is like the second laser pulse. It places the coin flat on the ground again, revealing the outcome of the toss. So now we know it's heads. With the diamond, it's the same. We can actually see it. It actually glows red. And the brightness of the diamond tells us how much magnetic field we were able to sense during the time it was in superposition. And so we can make a quantum measurement just using a laser and some structured microwaves. But optimizing the measurement device, so really using it to its fullest potential, is still a question of ongoing research. Quantum sensing is such a challenge because manipulating quantum systems, which are tiny, with big tools, it's basically like trying to flip a coin with boxing gloves. Pretty ridiculous. Oh, it spins. It's like trying to spin a coin on a rock. Almost impossible. Because the environment is constantly working against you. The techniques to do so are a question of quantum control. Besides the Envy Center, people at Cusco work with loads of different quantum systems. There's NMRs, superconducting qubits, Bose-Einstein condensates, chiral molecules, and Rydberg atoms. We are also looking at the future of quantum sensing, where we also use non-classical features of those quantum systems, such as squeezed states, or non-classical correlations, such as entanglement, to sense with even higher accuracy. Hopefully one day we'll be able to use it to measure single neurons in the brain, to look at the tiny variations on the distributions of water on Earth. Maybe it will even replace GPS navigating the Earth using its own magnetic field. But this future of possibilities is something that no one lab, no one university or no one company can tackle alone. This is why we came together in Cusco. In order to share knowledge and develop quantum sensing and control together.